Honestly, I have no real idea how this happened, but I spent the vast majority of the last 48 hours putting together this. This is River. It's a fully open source project that is currently live on NPM. I just finished it up today. Uh, I'll have the Git repo for it linked down below, which includes like a getting started, um, some examples for like how to actually use it. And what it actually is, is it's TRPC, but for agents and streams. But just if you look at this code right here, if you've ever used TRPC before, it's in my opinion, like one of the best libraries made in the last probably 10 years. It is such a damn good way for doing data fetching from client to server. And it's something that I like really, really wanted to have in the SvelteKit ecosystem to the point where I was pretty deep into building my own version of it. And then they introduced remote functions and now we really don't need it anymore, which is awesome. I'm glad that I don't have to deal with that. I just, I just wanted it to exist. And this is a very similar case where I've been doing a lot of these like agentic workflow things lately where I want to have really good UIs that can show off tool calls and reasoning steps and text steps and all this stuff right as it comes in and have like good type safety on that, have good error handling on that, have good abort logic on that. Just make sure that all this stuff really works well. And the current solutions were just not great to the point where I was basically hand rolling everything. Like this streaming implementation that I have within R8Y, a project I've talked about a little bit before. I'll show you how agonizingly painful the code for this was later, but for right now, I just wanna talk about how this guy actually works. And we'll start with one of the examples I put together for this. Like I said, all of this is completely free, completely open sourced, MIT licensed, and linked down below. This is one of the two example agents I did, where if we go in here, it's like a to-do list type thing, where basically you pass in a prompt here that gets sent to the agent. It has a tool for saving the to-do to the database. So you just hit start here, it'll go through, it'll take a second to start running. And then after a moment here, we should see our first response come in. And yep, you'll see right here. So it's streaming in the tool calls as they happen. So it did the get today's date tool, and then it did these, and then it just streamed in the rest of the text. And then now we have our response right here. This is obviously like not a good UI. It's just a very simple vibe coded UI to show how this stuff actually works. But the point is, if you do this in the real world, you can do it for stuff like this and have it in a way to where you can get like really good experiences for your end users when you're doing these like complex AI workload type things, which is becoming a more and more common thing these days, I'm noticing. The code for actually using River will look very, very familiar to you if you've ever used TRPC before, because I pretty much just stole all of the patterns from them because they got it all right. It's really, really good. You start out by defining an agent here. There are two different types of agents. I'm just gonna focus on the AI SDK one for the sake of this video. I'm defining a couple tools up here. And then the important piece down here is this add tasks agent. I am setting this equal to river server dot create AI SDK agent. This is very similar to the like procedure creator thing that you have in TRPC where we're defining an agent. We are giving the agent an input. So this is what you have to pass in in order to actually call the input. So we're passing in a user ID and a user's message. And then all we're doing down here is we're just returning the stream text call, which will have our model in there. It'll have the system prompt tools, like just basic AI stuff. And then we export this. And then we go into the router.ts file and we create our agent router, which is just where we can dump all of our agents. Uh, this project just has the one, the add tasks. So we put that in here and then we export the my river router and we also export the type of my river router. Again, very TRPC like. From there, we need to define an endpoint for actually running and doing the streams. Uh, that for me just lives at API slash river. So anytime you do a post request to API slash river, the river server will go through and like actually handle your request and do everything it needs to do. We can then make our client right here, which will basically create a set of callers we can then use to actually consume the agent's client side. So we just do river client dot create client caller. We then pass the generic of my river router into the client caller so that we get the type safety on the client. We give it the path to the API route we just defined over here. And then now everything is completely set up and working and done. No extra bullshit you have to do. And now you can just use these anywhere you want on the client. This is my agent store class thing. I, I love abusing the stores in Svelte so much. They are so good. I know classes are like a little controversial, not the greatest thing ever. I wouldn't use them on the server and I wouldn't use them for a lot of things, but for heavy client side logic that's super complicated, it's all state based. You have a bunch of state variables and you have a bunch of methods to update them and they all are grouped together logically. Classes make a lot of sense for this. So I've really enjoyed using those lately. It's one of the things I love about Svelte. And here within this store, I can just do my river client, which is the thing we defined in that last file. I could do my river .add tasks, and then we have the add tasks, which is the agent we defined. And then we can just use it. We have our on start callback. So whenever we start the agent, this will fire. We have on chunk, which I'll go back to in a second. This was like 
this was the reason I ended up building this thing. I really wanted to have this. Uh, then we have the on error callback here. We have the on complete callback here, the on cancel callback here. And then when we want to actually run this thing, it works just like a tan stack query mutation where we have to do task caller dot start. So this right here, this task caller, the thing that's returned from this has a start function and a stop function. And what's really nice about this is like all the normal crap you have to do in order to make streams work, where you have to fetch the stream and then you have to get the reader and then you have to keep reading until the reader stops. And then you have to handle a bunch of errors and you have to do the like uh, decoding. And then you have to do a bunch of typecasting because it's not type safe because it's just out of a fetch request. All that crap that you normally would have to do is just built into this and you don't have to think about it. You just start your agent and then whenever the agent has a chunk come down, it'll call this on chunk callback. It passes in a stream chunk right here, which is fully type safe. You can see that since we were doing a um, AI SDK stream, that means that the that each chunk is going to be a text stream part. And then we get all of the type safety we need on this in order to like populate our UI correctly. So when I have a tool call come in, I wanna save it as a display tool call. Obviously the type is tool call, I need the tool call ID, and then it's either going to be an add task call or a get today's date call, and then you have the input and output which are fully type safe because I am inferring their types where like, I didn't have to define any of this anywhere, I'm just using some of the like nice type interfaces that I put together for this. I'll show you how I did this later. I, uh, I've gotten really deep into TypeScript's bullshit on how to do the weird inference and generic stuff required to build good libraries in TypeScript. I'm able to grab the toolset type off of the add task agent. So I'm using this helper type I made, get the agent tool set. And then with the agent tool set, I can pull out the input and output types for each of the two agents. So you can just use this generic right here to get this type, put it down in here. You have your good type for this stuff, doing a similar thing for display text, but obviously it's text. So it's a lot simpler. Again, much simpler. We map all these together for our display agent output, and then we just store our agent output in a state array right here. So then every time we get a chunk down, we can add that to our state array depending on what the chunk is. So we get a tool result chunk down, we can get the actual correct type safety on here because again, I'm just inferring all of the types by using everything built into this very TRPC-like. And then we can push that into our list of agent outputs. Uh, similar thing for like text in order to get like the next, the nice text streaming thing. Anytime the text starts, we create a new text entry. And then whenever we get a text delta, we update the current text entries within the list. And then I also have the finish step where I just append in a break. And then that's like all you have to do. This went from like an incredibly obnoxious problem to solve in the R8Y project to just borderline trivial. And then you have all these lifecycle functions around it too, where like we can set our agent status to running on starts. And then if we hit an error, we can set our status to error. If we complete, we can do our normal complete things. On the cancel, we can do our cancellation things. It's, it's all just here. You just have everything you need in order to build really good agent experiences in a very custom way. There, there are no opinions prescribed in this. This is just like the life cycle of a stream. You do what you want to do with that. And that was like a really important thing to me. I don't like opinions in this kind of thing. I don't want you to prescribe some like chat format to me or some like weird shape you want the data to be in or some weird way it comes down. I just wanna get the raw chunks out of the stream with type safety and then put them in whatever box I feel like putting them into to make a really good UI because not every UI is a chat UI. In fact, I think most UIs that are using this stuff shouldn't be chat UIs. I think that's like something that the industry is doing very wrong right now. I don't want a text box for most of this stuff, but there still are a lot of places where I'm gonna to wanna to stick an agent run into a normal app. And this library lets you do that super, super easily and just handle it the way that you want to actually handle it. And just to give a little bit of context here, this is what the equivalent logic of what I just showed looks like in an old project where I had this start stream function and then I had to get my stream URL. I had to do my fetch request. I had to set up my abort controller and all that stuff. I had to handle a bunch of errors. I had to go through and make a reader. I then had to make a decoder. I had to loop through everything in here while I should continue, while it's not aborted, go through and do a bunch of reading on this, handle errors when the reading failed, go through and grab the data out of that. And then I had to go into this process stream chunk. And then since I was doing this raw, the stream chunks could be like one chunk or many. So I had to put them in the SSE format in order to be able to like split them up on the client and parse them correctly. So I had to do this whole massive thing in order to get that to work. And then finally, once I did that, then I could finally go into this chunk data thing and actually start doing my switch statement. I had to do so much more work in order to get this to actually work in this project versus in this project, it's just this. It, this is like all that you have to do. It's insanely easy. I was able to put this example together in like 
20 minutes. It feels so much better to work with than the old way of doing things. Now, as far as like how hard this was to actually make, I think I've mentioned this in the past, but earlier this summer, I did like a deep dive into TRPC in order to try and build a TRPC for Svelte. And in doing that project, I got a lot more familiar with like the crazy generic bullshit you have to do in order to make good library TypeScript code. The code we write in application land for TypeScript is usually pretty easy, pretty simple. The types just automatically show up and appear for us. It feels really nice. In library code, they don't. You are the one who has to come up with these types. So I had to define types for the different agents. So the AISDK agent, which I just showed off earlier, this is the type for that. It has an agent, which is the function where your stream text call lives. It has a type of AISDK, because again, I also have like a custom version of this. I don't want this video to be too long, so I won't go too deep into this one. If you're interested, it's all in the documentation link down below. I also have an input schema because I wanna make sure that like the inputs to the agent are type safe and validated. And then I have this like dumb little phantom type thing. This is the thing I stole from TRPC. This isn't an object that is accessible or usable in any way, shape or form in the actual project. The only reason it actually exists is just to trick TypeScript into thinking it exists so I can grab this type and this type easily. Because in order to actually make these library types work, because they're all generics and all dynamic, you have to be able to like extract types out of the code that the user made. And these just make it way easier for me to extract the input type or the chunk type from my agents than it would be to like go down into this function and then try and extract T from here. Like th this would just suck. And you can see how I'm doing that right down here. I have this infer river agent chunk type thing where uh, it takes in a generic T, it checks to make sure that T extends, which in TypeScript world basically just means is the correct type of phantom optional with a chunk type of infer chunk. And this infer right here is the key piece. This is how the TypeScript compiler is able to yoink out the chunk type and return it here because it's a ternary operation. And then we can use this type in other places like in the river client caller, which is the thing on the client that actually calls the agents or whatever. We're doing some crazy TypeScript bullshit in here of like, we're basically creating an object. We're, how do I explain this? We're telling, we're not actually creating an object, but we're telling TypeScript that we do have an object effectively. We're, we're kind of just lying to TypeScript here because we're making a proxy, which will work like an object, but it has this get method, which will return what the object would be if it did exist, if it like did exist. It's, it's very, very weird. I don't want to go too deep into any of this stuff because this video will be way too long and most people really don't need to understand how all this stuff works. If you are interested in this, like I said, the code's linked down below, go look at it there. But the point is I can use my infer river agent chunk type thing right here in order to infer that type so that when I'm actually using this and I hover over this add tasks method right here, you can see this is the correct type coming out of the AI SDK of a text stream part with tool tool, two tools, add task, get today's date. And if I like went into the agent or whatever, and then I changed the name of this to be like add tasks, I will get type errors because like I said, this whole thing is like fully type safe with all this crazy type inference stuff. It's really, really cool stuff. Just not something you probably need to or should be doing every day. As far as like the future of this project, there's a lot of other stuff that I want to add into this. Like I want to add hooks on the server for like before agent run and after agent run where we can get access to the raw HTTP request so that we can do like an authentication check or we could pull something from the DB before we do the run and pass that into the LLM. Uh, after agent run for like any cleanup stuff, a good on air, a good on a board, like all the things you would need to just like really use this in a heavy production application. I also need to like actually clean up the package itself. It's kind of a mess right now where like I just have a bunch of dependencies from testing it and all that that are getting bundled into the NPM package. Again, it's alpha software. We're just, I'm proving out a proof of concept right now. Uh, these need to get cleaned. I need more robust error handling and stuff. I want to do like a TRPC error type thing. The error handling is like kind of fine right now and it does work generally, but it's just, it, it could be way better. And then like the big thing that I really want to get working eventually is going to be like true resumable stream support where like I have this working in this guy, I do a ton of work to get this working custom. But if I start a new agent run, it'll start doing stuff here. And then if I just like refresh the page, instead of disappearing like it would on a lot of sites, including major AI labs, chat apps, uh, it'll just pop right back in. It just works. I can, you know, uh, copy this link and then go into my other browser and then paste this link in and then it'll just show up and I'll just pick up right where it left off. They we're here and then we're over here and it just all works. I have like a really good setup for resumable streams on this. I want to get that added into River really, really badly. That's going to be a lot of work because I'm going to have to figure out some like adapter system probably because I want to support like S2. I want to support Redis. 
I want to support um, other people bringing their own stuff into this. And again, we'll just like see how far this goes. This was like a weekend project, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. If you watch this far into the video, I do really appreciate it. This very much falls into the category of just like, this is a thing that I want to exist. I don't really care about anything other than that. I am totally happy for someone to steal this and use it somewhere else and make the whole ecosystem better. I just want to be able to build really cool apps and I want the experience to not be hellish. That's all I really want here. And uh, if you like this and think this is interesting, please go give it a star on GitHub. That helps a lot and will help increase adoption and get it seen by the right people and hopefully help change the way we're doing stuff from the kind of awkward and annoying ways that it works right now over to like something that is much more aligned with the modern web stuff that we figured out in the last couple of years. TRPC got this shit right. Let's bring it to the other stuff. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. I will definitely have a lot more to say about this in the future.